Hello, hello, hello everyone! Good morning, good day, good evening, regardless where you are. Today is Tuesday, so it's a special day of our live stream YouTube translation from Moscow Studio. Today is a special event because it's Christmas time, so we have our Christmas tree uh, or New Year tree, depending on which part of the world you are. And uh, my name is Sergey Luria, uh, I'm staff geek of Kaspersky. And we have our special guest, Evgenia Ruskich. And yeah, my name is Evgenia Ruskich, and I'm Senior Educational Programs Manager at Kaspersky Academy. That was very geeky. <laughs> Even geekier than I am. So today, uh, we will be talking about education. And as it is uh, New Year's Eve, uh, we will be using tangerines as a model of education. Okay. So imagine this is a tangerine, a multidimensional sphere or surface of human knowledge. So when you are graduating from, ho uh, from high school, you're here, you see, right in the middle. That's about the amount of knowledge you have when you graduate from high school. When you go to the university or college, you become specialized. So this is how your knowledge looks like from the standpoint. You cannot study everything, right? So this is your specialization. After you finish your master's degree, you go on to an de uh, advanced degree. And only then you have an ability to puncture through the surface and gain some extra knowledge for the humanity. So that's the importance of education. Do you agree? Well, I get the whole concepts and I love the tangerine example. Uh, of course, uh, if we're talking about creation of new knowledge, uh, the concept uh, is absolutely correct. But when we're talking about uh, personal acquiring of skills uh, and uh, personal development, I would say that the, the concept may differ and that acquiring uh, new knowledge for yourself and new skills uh, does not always uh, imply on creating new knowledge for others. And uh, that's developing yourself and developing yourself as a specialist or as a, uh, a master of uh, some kind of uh, work uh, doesn't always uh, require uh, acquiring a deep academic knowledge on the topic. But how can you get a skill without knowledge? Uh, I was taught back when I was doing my PhD that first you have knowledge, then you have skill and then you have a habit so three things you need to, to do your work properly how can you get to this habit or skill whatever without knowledge well acquiring uh we're not talking about acquiring habits right now but if we're talking about uh acquiring skills i may say that uh at the moment uh when we have a great deal of different educational courses which focus on uh, giving people specific technical we're talking about technical skills right now i'm talking about technical <laughs> skills right now okay <laughs> yeah when we're talking about technical skills um this is uh, more a uh, yeah this might be obtained not without getting knowledge but with focus on obtaining skill uh, because if we compare the classical uh, university technical education uh, to a more uh, more free version uh, in, in in all ways of saying the word free uh, of uh, for example online education and online acquiring of skills uh, we may uh, say that uh, here the uh, the classic education of course it gives you a big a wide uh, base of uh, different uh, types of information which we, you may use uh, in order to build the skills yourself but also uh, when you acquire specific skills for specific needs that you have uh, sometimes it's not about gaining a big piece of knowledge uh, and building a skill on top of it sometimes it's just about obtaining a specific technical skill I remind you, everyone who has just joined, uh, that you can ask your questions and uh, the most active uh, commenters in chat will receive prizes. Can you say a few words about prizes that you have today? Uh, 
Oh, well, as uh, Sergey mentioned, the Christmas is near. Uh, we have some, uh, some Midori socks uh, here for, uh, for the best questions. And also, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a notebook. A for, notebook? Yeah, a notebook for writing down your skills <laughs> and your knowledge. <laughs> okay, okay. And also uh, the, the license. Uh, yeah, for... we will be giving away software codes as usual. Okay, but uh, you mentioned the skill set. Uh, actually, the amount of knowledge is not that large if you compare to the whole tangerine. This is how much you get. And this is an exaggerated picture. In, in reality, the amount of knowledge you can get by studying in the university is even smaller. It's like amplified a thousand times because there are uh, how many people? Uh, Seven billion, right? If uh, like 10 point, uh, 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 sorry, 0.1% of them are scientists, that already millions of scientists or researchers or True. engineers. True, <laughs> but uh, when, when we're talking about uh, getting education uh, we also talk about uh, the the aim for that yeah okay. the, the, the aim for yeah the goal for 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 uh, acquiring the education and uh, in case for example uh, you're rather a doer uh, I mean uh, you want to go to the industry for example and not uh, go to the academia further for a PhD, for example, as you did. <laughs> uh, in that case... Uh, You're gonna be trolling me for that, right? Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, um, I, uh, I may say that uh, I personally was also thinking of acquiring a PhD, but uh, after the, uh, doing my diploma, I understood that the, the topic uh, of uh, the PhD I want to do is not in any way connected to, to my previous degree. So uh, now this idea is paused <laughs> <laughs> okay. anyway. But uh, if we're talking about uh, acquiring some practical, uh, practical skills, I, uh, I cannot quarrel the fact that education and the base is very important. But uh, I, uh, and I also think that a skill uh, cannot exist in vacuum. The, the knowledge is very important. But uh, the main but in what I want to say is that uh, sometimes and uh, right now maybe uh, more usually uh, the uh, skill is more important, the acquiring skill is more important uh, and is the, uh, is the aim of the whole process uh, than just acquiring uh, knowledge itself. Okay. Because knowledge itself is uh, not always very applicable and also when we're uh, talking about the way educational process is structured right now, uh, even uh, classic academia is switching from the uh, knowledge-based approach to skill-based approach and university curriculums are rebuilt uh, the way that uh, for students uh, not the uh, knowledge pyramid is built which they need to acquire but uh, the skill list is created which students need to obtain. Okay, I get your ideas following. So uh, when people graduate from high school they're quite immature well, most of the people are. Uh, there are some wonder children who are quite mature when they like in junior high, whatever. Uh, but uh, at 18 year olds, it's really high. Uh, it's really hard for them to understand uh, which career they are going to pursue. So it's perfectly normal for yourself, for example, that you graduate with one specialty, but you actually work in another field. But uh, why don't we just uh, fine tune the mechanisms, the technology we use to understand uh, what the person is up to and uh, test them earlier, uh, get them ready earlier and then educate them properly so that we can have uh, better specialists in those uh, narrow areas that, that we sometimes need. Well, I would say that I actually do not believe right now uh, in a one-time uh, career choice for the whole life uh, because uh, while well, I'm uh, even talking about me myself, I may say that I uh, obtained the education uh, in uh, chemistry and I work currently in education and cybersecurity, which I was not uh, related, uh, well, 
hardly was related uh, while studying I would argue at university. about later. <laughs> okay, you may argue about later. Uh, but um, proceeding further, uh, if we're talking about a uh, younger uh, generation than myself, uh, they are already uh, changing their uh, careers, maybe each their career path each three or four years because they understand that they studied, for example, marketing, and now they want to do, uh, I don't know, um, social media and after that they understand that they want to do cooking and start their own uh, business uh, in uh, delivery of uh, uh, organic uh, organic <laughs> baskets to the families in the city from which they may create uh, their dinners with okay. the with the less um, uh, with less time investments from them. And uh, this is what I see currently, that people switch, uh, switch their interests and careers quite fast. And uh, as the world is uh, speeding up, the, the world is speeding up, and uh, we have more opportunities, we're less uh, connected to the place we were born in, we're less connected as we learn languages a lot, we're less connected not only to the location, itself but to the country as well and we have a, a, a huge amount of opportunities for ourselves I would say that uh, sticking yourself to one career choice for the lifetime uh, is not the the thing that's going to work even if we try to uh, to identify what the person uh, is even more inclined to okay uh, we are going to take some pause uh, I suggest that you look at the video, you watch the video about Eva Galperin. Uh, she is a cybersecurity specialist uh, who initially didn't specialize in cybersecurity. Basically, having access to somebody's phone is the next best thing to having access to their mind. My name is Eva Galperin and I'm the Director of Cybersecurity at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. I run a team of uh, security researchers who are mostly concerned with protecting uh, free speech, privacy uh, and innovation online. I did several years of research on APTs, and it turned out that one of my fellow researchers uh, was a serial rapist. And when he was outed, there was uh, an article that was an interview with one of his victims, and the journalist asked, what took you so long to come forward? And her reply was that she was scared. Uh, because he was a hacker, she was really worried that he would hack into her devices, that uh, he had threatened to compromise. I was horrified, and I never wanted anybody to feel that way again. So I tweeted, if you were a woman who had been sexually assaulted by a hacker, that you could get in touch with me and I would provide a forensic analysis. It got something like 10,000 retweets, and I still get contacted several times a day from people looking for help. People come to me whose children were kidnapped as part of a messy divorce. I had a woman come to me whose former partner had been spying on her through her internet-connected thermostat. I had a man come to me who had been outed as gay to his extremely conservative family. This is not just a you know, men spying on women issue. The people who are targeted by spouseware are often not the people that security companies think about when they think about who they want to protect because they're not the people with the money. These are not governments. These are not enterprises. These are often not even people who have control over their own finances. And so there's really nobody to speak for them. I don't feel that there are any legitimate uses for technology which is designed specifically to run covertly and to fool the end user into thinking that there is nothing wrong with their device and they're not being surveilled. There are a lot of things that we can do. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's really important for the AV industry to step up and start taking this threat seriously and start marking spouseware and stalkerware as malicious. 
there's a certain view that spying on your spouse is somehow okay. Not only is it unethical and immoral, but in many cases, depending on how you do it, it is very likely to be illegal. So if you are not concerned about spouse wear, uh, I recommend trying to imagine a situation in which you might be a victim. And I would really like to see more people in our community uh, call people out when they catch people doing it. I've got a game plan and I'm going to fight. Hi again, we're talking about education and this is a special live stream event today. In the New Year's Eve, we have a Christmas tree. We're explaining educational concepts using tangerine. And I'm a staff geek, Sergey Luria, and we have a special guest, Evgenia Ruskich. Senior Educational Programs Manager at Kaspersky Academy. She's even geekier than I am, sorry. Uh, in this part of our live stream, we would like to talk about universities. And I will be debating that uh, uh, universities is a place, our place, uh, our places where students have knowledge of their specialization. Uh, before we go into the discussion, uh, I would like to remind that we are awarding license codes for our software. Evgenia brought us uh, special Christmas socks with yes. Midori. And, and notepads. Notepads. Uh, those questions about technical support, uh, I think my colleagues will be answering them in chat. Uh, I currently don't see uh, questions to our speakers, but I'm looking forward to that. And uh, uh, please type them in chat while we are talking. So speaking about universities, these ivory towers where pure knowledge is bred, I believe that's important. What can you say about that? Uh, I cannot argue the fact that the existence of universities uh, is really important. Uh, as an institution that uh, creates new knowledge and uh, does the quality control, uh, but not all universities are equally good. And this is, I would say, really important uh, because uh, when you want to acquire uh, new knowledge, uh, you want to find the best uh, to do that. And uh, if we're talking about classic academical education, the amount of, uh, of students that might be enrolled for that type of education is highly limited. And okay. uh, even uh, if you are uh, as talented uh, as you are and you may compete for the uh, best place, you may not always have uh, a good access to it. I mean, physical access, and we're talking uh, right now on uh, 21st uh, of December, 2020, when <laughs> I would say uh, most of the world has uh, a lesser access, physical access. watch is off, it's 22nd. It's 20 seconds? Yes. Oh yeah, it's 20 seconds. That's the guy strange. who programmed your watch didn't go to a good university, I'll tell you. It was just the matter of update, I would say. But um, we don't have, currently, uh, we don't have a high physical access, uh, for example, to, uh, to universities. And even uh, if you study uh, abroad, uh, you may uh, didn't you might not have an, didn't have an opportunity to go to your university physically and acquire uh, the uh, that level of education that was programmed uh, to your curriculum well, when it was created. So I would uh, say that uh, creation of uh, online universities uh, of uh, of the, that's uh, big amounts of uh, online courses that we have uh, right now of different quality yes of course mm -hmm. uh, but uh, some of them have really good quality is uh, 
very important because it gives uh, people more opportunities of acquiring uh, knowledge of high quality independently uh, of the uh, of their basic level I would say and of uh, their opportunities for uh, travel okay uh... I could argue that it may be the thing of the of the moment because of the pandemic we cannot travel so we have to study online. However, uh, well, take MIT for example, and they have this open courseware thing, where people can go and uh, study for free quite advanced science if they wish. Well, yeah. I, I'm a science guy, so I, I'm taking MIT as an example. You are as well. Uh, my point is that without uh, basic understanding of calculus, you will be uh, hardly proficient in any of those courses. And uh, uh, looking at the variety of online classes from different universities, I see that not, the, not, not, not all of them are good. And I would personally go to MIT and study, but I will need to have some basic uh, fundamentals of calculus. Where can I get them? Uh, well, I would say that the diversity of online courses already mentioned uh, is really high and you, you may find nearly everything. Uh, but of course, when it comes to online products, uh, you may, uh, it would be true to say that the, uh, the level of content differs from time uh, to time uh, really a lot. And here, a uh, person uh, need, has to make decision on his own whether uh, the content that is proposed is of high quality or is not. And this, is, uh, this would be uh, the skill that you, you need to develop yourself of evaluation whether uh, the educational content is rather good or it's not. Uh, we have a question from uh, Maturaf. Fahali. So, I, I must apologize if I'm misspelling your name, I thank you for your question. So, uh, he's asking uh, that, uh, is it better to acquire knowledge and after skills, or skills first and then knowledge? What do you think? Well, I'd say that the basic uh, concept, is, uh, which we discussed before, is about acquiring knowledge at first and uh, building skills on top of it. But uh, I may also say that this might be a simultaneous process. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if uh, you may acquire skills first without any knowledge. I think it's doubtful. But uh, doing it in parallel may be the, the most, uh, the, 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 the perfect way. <laughs> okay, okay. So if we compare knowledge with tangerine, as we did in our previous part, uh, it's better to grow tangerines where they grow better like in southern places and online education is like means of transportation so they have been grown and they are being transported to us through online education would you agree with that uh yeah i would agree with that but we may also say that if you are really stubborn you may grow tangerine mostly <laughs> anywhere <laughs> so, they won't be that good though uh they might be uh not that good but uh, still, it's a tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thinking, uh, talking about stubbornness uh, and about completion of the degree, do you think the completed degree is important? Uh, well, uh, I myself personally do think that, uh, well, if you started something, you should finish it. So if you uh, started obtaining a degree, of course, it's always better to, to finish it and to, to have, uh, well, to have your diploma, of course. And that's when we are going to have a short break and watch how our own... Uh, Great researcher. Great researcher <laughs> who, is, uh, who has researched that degrees actually can be hacked. I mean, great. Hi, I'm David, security evangelist at Kaspersky Lab. And as some of you know, I've been publishing some videos about security things, everything from <laughs> watching porn to uh, security threats on Valentine's Day and different things. Right now in the world, there's a lot of students who's graduating and uh, some of the things that could be very interesting is looking into the grades of the students. 
were the grades hacked? Is the student actually as good as he or she says? I was looking into the dark web and just trying to see, is there any stolen grades or is there any hackers for hire that can change your grades or is it just something that we see in movies? But when I was looking around in the dark web, I saw that there's actually a lot of diplomas and certificates and also services with hackers who's offering kids and students to, um, to hack into their schools and change their grades. So I was wondering, how does that actually work? So I was looking through the internet and there's actually some, some very popular softwares or services um, which contains vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities allow the attacker to obtain some quite sensitive information. But when analyzing these vulnerabilities, I, I noticed that this is probably not the way that these systems get hacked. The most common way of these systems to get hacked is actually with reused passwords. These systems, these, these school systems are password protected and the user sets its own password. So if you reuse your password, then you might have been compromised. Your, your account might have been compromised. So with that in mind, I just want to recommend to all the schools and all the teachers and all the parents to, to actually re review your password. If you do have access to one of these school portals where you can check your grades for, for your children, make sure that if it's possible that you have two-factor authentication enabled. Make sure that you actually re review the grades. Like, is, is this student actually as good as as it should. Also, when, when it comes to the IT department or the person responsible for the network in the schools, maybe you should do some kind of network segmentation so, that, so, so these school systems are not available on the same network as the students. As we've seen in all the movies, they get quite trigger happy. So just to reduce the hacking attempt that you'll see from the students, I would recommend to do some kind of network segmentation. Also, try to go to the, to the dark web. There's tons of guides on, on how to do it. And in these public marketplaces, just search for your university or your school and see if there are any grades and diplomas and certificates being sold for your particular university or school. That's some recommendations from me. And uh, kids, don't hack your school. Hey guys, we're back from our short pause, short break. Here in our New Year's Eve studio, we are discussing education. I'm uh, our staff geek for Kaspersky, and we have marvelous Evgenia Ruskich. Senior Education Programs Manager from Kaspersky Academy. I can't understand how she says that all the time. <laughs> anyway, uh, we are distributing our software licenses for the best questions in chat, software, and special New and Year's we have presents. Some socks. And no book. Yeah. Uh, I see that you are asking about an incident. Uh, I assume you're talking about solar winds hack, which happened last week. Uh, we are not talking about this uh, hack during this live stream, but you can go to our securelist.com uh, website. We, uh, our great researchers, uh, one of whom you have, just, you have just seen, they published a research uh, where they track the DNS and they uh, have uh, uh, their point of view, how it happened, what happened, and that there is a lot more complications uh, than what's been published already. So th it's an ongoing research. Uh, I think my helpers uh, will send you a link in chat. Uh, continuing to what we've been talking before, completion of a degree. Uh, my point was that uh, everything that has been started, or it was your point. It was my point. It was your point. <laughs> okay, my point was that you need to have a completed degree from a reputed university. Uh, and you were saying that everything that has uh, started sh should be finished. But is that so? Are there examples where people don't really need to, to finish uh, what they started? Well, of course, uh, if talking about uh, the some uh, world's famous examples, we have uh, really bright examples of example, uh, well, uh, of. Uh, uh, the founder of Apple company who did not uh, finish his degree and actually was uh, listening to some courses which he wanted to listen and then just exited the university. I'm talking of course about 
Isn't that the way they are studying in the United States? No, it's not. He didn't have a degree. Okay. He didn't okay. finish. And uh, if we're talking about uh, having, well, about having a diploma and a degree, there's a lot of cases of uh, of people even. Uh, very uh, famous and still alive entrepreneurs who did not finish their uh, their degree at all, and uh, in spite of that, they managed to become very uh, successful. So uh, we may say that having a degree is not always uh, important <laughs> to become successful as an engineer, as an entrepreneur, as uh, well as a person who uh, who wants to do what he really wants and not what they tell you to do. Who who tells you? Well. Uh, Returning to that concept of skills-based education, okay. uh, the uh, well, the previously the educational system was built on the concept where the teacher uh, delivered the knowledge he or she uh -huh. supposed to be important to be delivered, uh, and uh, we may say that the concept of education was teacher-based when the teacher delivers knowledge in the speeds. Uh, he or she uh, wants to deliver in the with the volume he or uh -huh. she wants to deliver, and uh, the, only the the staff uh, he or she is interested to deliver. Uh, but now we're rather when talking about skill-based approach, we're talking about student-focused delivery. When a student acquires the knowledge in the speed he or she wants to and is comfortable to acquire that knowledge uh, in the well in the uh, not in the volume and the amount of questions he or she wants to ask and the the topics they want to include so i would say that um, in this way uh, skill based approach is even more uh, interesting to me because well remembering the way i uh, was uh, taught some of the uh, some of the subjects uh -huh. uh, even in the university I, uh, you understand that, of course, there is some basis that is, uh, well, uh, always or sometimes okay. quite dull, which you, of course, you need to get that. But uh, it's also really important when you, uh, when you study something new to have your, your own interests uh, and through your own interests uh, to, to ask the questions and to, uh, to find on your own whether something is really uh, interesting to you. So, uh, can we say that sometime before the education market was like seller market and now it's a buyer market, so students uh, get more freedom to decide which uh, education they buy? Yeah, I actually I would agree with that because uh, well, currently you you yourself uh, may uh, try to buy the thing you yourself feel more comfortable with, and even in terms of education, of course, uh, rather well, we're rather talking about online. Uh, now I would say because uh, the well c classic education you may always uh, also go for example for for the for the paid education but there you would uh, also have lesser opportunities to choose on your own okay which teacher to go to for example <laughs> okay so we have some more questions to ask uh, to answer okay. uh, how to bypass antivirus we won't be answering that <laughs> you cannot bypass antivirus. Uh, there's a good question from Neil Dosh. Again, I apologize if I misspell some uh, na names. Um, I heard that before, before that every two years the knowledge gained from college is expired and they need to get updated. Is that true? If that is true, well, how can we keep updated us, ourselves and how frequently? Well, there is a really widespread right now concept of lifelong learning. Uh, mm -hmm. which uh, which is quite old but uh, still and now even more relevant than before and uh, yeah we may say that each uh, each two or three years the amount of knowledge in the world uh, doubles mm -hmm. and amount of uh, well existing tangerine knowledge. concept it's <laughs> yeah. inflating uh, we have a, a huge tangerine and it's growing uh, and uh, of course the uh, if we're talking about uh, classic uh, delivery based on the uh, how they how they call it the books the books we study on uh, 
uh, the, 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 those books may not be reissued and refreshed each, uh, each, I don't know, each year because it's, well, it would take at first too much paper uh, and of course uh, it would be enormously hard to, to do that. Uh, and that's why I'm talking about skills because skills you usually acquire from practitioners, from the people who, who practice uh, the well, the, the in industry, uh, in everyday life, so there, uh, and if your practitioner uh, skill is not very fresh, you're, uh, you're not a good practitioner and you obviously, I would say, would not be invited to, to teach something if you're not that good. So uh, in, in that case, uh, trying to learn from the people who practice the thing you want to learn each day uh, is really important and uh, that's why sometimes uh, academia loses for example to online education because yeah of course it's really hard to keep the pace with the way and the with the speed the world develops okay so basically learn every day and you don't have to upgrade your degree yeah every two years <laughs> uh, there is also a comment from uh, Mokit uh, Rajapat 99% uh, of jobs require degree do you agree with that? Or there are some jobs that don't require a degree? Uh, well, I'd say that I, unfortunately, I don't have a like fresh market statistic. I did not prepare that good for uh, maybe for for today's uh, live stream. But I would say that, uh, uh, especially this year, there's a big amount of people who work on freelance. And if you're a freelancer, you do not always need to have a degree to do the job uh, you may do. Okay. And I think we can answer uh, oh, two questions from uh, Tomislav Tertan uh, before we go to another break. Okay. Uh, in skill versus knowledge, what would be preferred as a choice for a person in the matter that skills are applicable and provide more of an output in smaller amount of time, while knowledge provides more assurance and development possibilities due to skills being learned, but do require more to change, develop. I think this one question is in three Yeah, it looks parts. like. <laughs> and develop to a higher level and people tend to hold on to skills they know as opposed to skill they need to learn. So what can you say about that? What, what better choice should be? A focus on shorter term output or invest into long term education. Get yourself a specialization and become a tangerine uh, well, again, those tangerines. I, I may eat it afterwards, I think. But, uh, well, uh, I think that the, the question itself uh, covers uh, the, the talk we had today somehow. Uh, because it's, it's really a matter of uh, a choice, of your own choice, whether to, uh, to build yourself uh, a long way through obtaining a wider knowledge and uh, building on top of that some specific skills, maybe a wide range of different specific skills, or focusing on a one really specific area and digging into it. Uh, I personally uh, really like uh, the, con the interdisciplinary concepts uh, that is uh, uh, really uh, developing the like latest years and all the new uh, knowledge areas are created in between different disciplines. We'll talk about that after a short break, but before we <laughs> okay. go on short break, uh, uh, we will uh, in the next uh, part of our live stream, we will be uh, summing up our chat history, we will announce the winners of the contest. Uh, right now, watch the short video about how Eugene Kaspersky himself received his diploma. So he has a Finnish diploma. Eugene has made an invaluable contribution to computer science and IT security. And Plymouth University, which has itself made IT security a specialization, is delighted to be able to recognize his outstanding achievements by awarding him an honorary degree. Vice Chancellor, I have the honor to present Eugene Kaspersky for the award of an honorary doctorate of science degree of Plymouth University.
Thank you very much. And uh, I'm a little bit nervous because it's uh, very unexpected to receive such an award here in the Plymouth University. Uh, that's the greatest pleasure. And that's, that proves that my personal contribution in my company, uh, my employees, uh, thank you, uh, that we're doing the right job and uh, going in the right way. And that's just to prove that we, are, we, are do, we do our best to support the cyberspace and to keep the peace in this land. Hello everyone, we're back in our studio. Today, in Christmas Eve, we're discussing education uh, with Evgenia Ruskich. Senior Educational Programs Manager, Kaspersky Academy, and Sergei Luria. Uh, well, I call myself, I call myself a staff geek, geek of Kaspersky, but I think I'm not the, the geekiest person here. <laughs> so guys, uh, uh, it's time to sum up the question and chat history. I think uh, one of the most people in chat was uh, Mohit uh, Rajat Pati. I apologize if I uh, misspelling your name. Uh, you receive, you will receive a license code for uh, Kaspersky software. Uh, my helpers will give you um, a, a, an address where you can provide your contact details. Is there anyone you would like to award with uh, your wonderful socks with Midori? Yeah, I'd like to award the person uh, whose question was the, the last we answered to. Uh... Tomislav uh, Tritanj. Yeah. Again. Uh, sometimes I'm really bad at spelling last names. Numbers are much easier. Uh, in this section of our live stream, uh, we would like to talk about... Uh, what would we like to talk about? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, we finished uh, with, the, with the concept of... Uh, interdisciplinary. interdisciplinary approach. <laughs> you got me. So, my point is that uh, when everybody is doing interdisciplinary stuff, they become less proficient in their key specialty. They become less specialized and lose competitive edge. And by the way, there was a question about certification or degree. And certification is one of the ways to prove that you are actually specializing in something. Uh, the question to you, and uh, uh, would you oppose to my, to my point that uh, uh, you need to maintain your specialization first and uh, do some interdisciplinary stuff later? Uh, well, sometimes the uh, new knowledge is, uh, as I said previously, sometimes new knowledge is created uh, based on uh, the implementation of interdisciplinary approach. So sometimes a new discipline is created when two other disciplines uh, cross together. And uh, in that case, I would say that no, it's not really important to uh, obtain one specialization uh, first if you come already at the place where a new discipline is created. But uh, if you just approach to creating some new discipline, of course, you need to have a deeper specialization in one of those areas, at least in one of those areas uh, which are supposed to cross. Okay, real life example. For example, I would like to create a startup that would be uh, doing some machine learning. So uh, I would be a CEO, obviously. Okay. Uh, I would like <laughs> to hire some machine learning specialist. But how am I going to understand who is in front of me? Which kind of interdisciplinary skills I should uh, develop? For yourself? For myself? I would suggest you to, to find a good assessment tool <laughs> to, okay. to assess the people you want to hire. Is it all about tools or maybe it's about people? Communication maybe? Uh, it's, uh, well, if we're talking about working together, it's always uh, not about the knowledge itself, but also about people and the way they may communicate. And here we approach the concept of soft skills. Mm -hmm. which we also need to acquire while studying, not only the, the technical uh, ones, but also the soft skills, which will help you to, uh, to work in interdisciplinary uh, teams, for example, and understand people better and uh, find new knowledge for yourself on your own. This is also a soft skill. And uh, even digging through enormous uh, big amount of information, I would say. I would argue. 
is an analytical skill. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's working about big data. It's about yeah. data processing. True. Uh, but you mentioned the communication skill and uh, working in teams. Uh, you have a security cup. It's about uh, student teams competing for some prize from Kaspersky, right? Yeah, true. So what kind of skills do these people need to have? Uh, well, uh, first of all, they uh, need to, to be the ones who want to create something new. Uh, and uh, I would say this is a quite a, a rare uh, thing to find in people. Uh, the not only uh, the wish, but also an intent to create something new on your own. And after that, uh, there's, it's really important to find a, some fresh idea and to create some fresh idea. And sometimes to do that, you need first to set up a team of people with whom you're interested to work with, who have uh, developed skills in uh, specific, uh, some specific domains. And to, together with them, to find that new idea that will inspire you and that will uh, help you to create something new together. So it's about creativity, it's about uh, working together, it's about managing a team or managing yourself if you work alone. Uh, it's also, uh, well, <laughs> maybe one of the most uh, difficult parts uh, after you finish creating your project is to deliver your project. It's to, uh, to sell it to other people, to make them understand why this is important, why the thing you've done is really inspiring, why they need it. So it's uh, also a matter of doing a presentation, of uh, talking to the camera or to another person. Uh, this is a, a huge blast of soft skills, uh, which is not always really easy to acquire, but which I would say is really important to have in modern life in order to compete for the best. Well, that I actually agree. I couldn't agree even more with you, because uh, when I graduated with my PhD, the first thing that I learned after uh, walking out of academic walls is that it's not enough just to do your job. It's also important to communicate about it. And uh, I think it's time for us to finish our live stream. I would like to thank everyone for participating. Thank you, Evgenia. Thank you. Uh, the finishing episode of our today's live stream will be about communicating from people uh, with, uh, with people, uh, between people on different continents. Uh, in this day and age when we are staying at home, everyone stay safe, stay creative, and Happy New Year! And Merry Christmas! <laughs> Liebe geht durch den Magen in German means love goes through your stomach and there's a very similar expression in Russian. Uh, so the way we are saying things often are quite, quite similar. Hi, I'm Rainer. I'm the head of content and channels for Tomorrow Unlocked at Kaspersky. PR, like every other discipline in marketing, needs to develop on a constant basis. And would we are yeah, to show a few new ways of how we could do PR. Would we maybe in a few years seriously see Netflix and Amazon Prime as a PR channel? Then, well, we'd have to see that um, companies are set up in a way that they can produce content that is interesting enough for someone to watch on these channels. Shooting films during the pandemic has become, well, increasingly difficult. And so we had to come up with new approaches uh, how we would shoot films like um, we are now shooting this interview for example on a GoPro which is uh, not an unusual thing to do watch the full video <laughs>